Ladies and gentlemen, it's Silent Mike. Welcome back to Fix Your Form, where I take your form and I coach you through some lifts. If you guys are new, be sure to smash that thumbs up if you enjoy this type of content and subscribe. Today we got that making love cheater sumo edition. Working on everybody's sumo's pose. Let's see what we got here. Not bad. Not bad, my friend. See, everything is really solid. He gets a slack out of the bar. He's flexing those lats. He's flexing his back. One thing I suggest for most people is not to always, but for most cases, if we can get those knees over our midfoot, you can see they're inside of his foot right now. We're going to be a lot stronger. Um, one, we'll be able to flex our quads a little bit better. Two, it will put us in a more optimal position to get our hips in the proper position and get our torso a little bit more upright. Now, some people can get away with a wider stance and knees slightly inside of their foot, but I think for the majority of people, this is going to be more optimal. So my man, what two things I would try. One, you could try pushing uh, your toes out a little bit more, or excuse me, pointing them out a little bit more and really forcing those knees out either way. Um, another thing I would do is literally just move each foot in I don't know, maybe two inches or so from where you are, and then continue to force those knees out as you tighten up that low back, as you flex those lats, as you drop your hips, and really fire and push from there. You know, something that's helped tons of sumo pullers, uh, myself included, um, is just general quad strength. Because once you get in the right position, you're in a pretty dang good position, my friend. I just think you'll be in a slightly, oh, just drop the tripod. Uh, you'll be in a slightly better position if you can get those knees out a little bit more. Overall though, I'd say your form is really, really good. Um, and again, to continue to build your sumo pull, sumo pulling has got to be number one. Number two is general back strength. And number three is quad strength in no particular order. Um, but building up those quads, building up those back will help a lot. Um, you can continue to uh, work on flexing those lats. You are tightening up your back pretty well. Um, one thing when you're using straps or hook grip, it's very easy uh, to really get some twalk in those shoulders. And I try to get my elbows pointing backwards, bending that barbell similar to a bench press. Another extra cue or way to flex those lats. Uh, but overall, your starting position is really, really, really good. If I do, say so myself. So continue pushing. Um, I try to experiment, you know, a week or two with all the adjustments I give everybody. Give them at least two weeks, a couple of sessions. It's not always just going to click and feel better or lift more weight, but over time it might help. Pulling the slack out, we got a little deadlift bar action. We're going extra cheater and boy, do I love it. Um, if grip is not an issue, my man, first thing I do is move that grip in, adjust a hair. You can see it's just outside of your shoulders. And with a sumo pull, if possible, um, because sometimes you will have some fingers on the smooth, which doesn't affect many people. Even I, me, myself, and I, I put one finger onto the smooth part. Um, the straighter the line, the better. Um, otherwise, from this position, that angle was a little weird. Oh, not bad. All right, I was going to say, you can't see much from that angle. Uh, but this angle itself uh, is really, really solid, my friend, especially those... Uh, reps two and three. Reps number one, you get uh, a little bit out of position. Your hips are a hair low. You can see that bar get pushed forward by your knees. So make sure you're trying to keep those shins vertical. Uh, and also make sure that there's tension in your hamstrings when you're dropping your hips. You don't want to just drop your hips for no reason. What we're trying to do is teeter-totter our weight backwards as we pull our torso up. We're getting a lot of good sumo pullers. This man's strong. This man's strong. Overall, really solid right there. If I could see a better back position, it looks like your back might be a hair rounded. It looked like you might just be rushing that start a bit. But overall, really, really good. What, we got 585 on there? Is that 70% you beast? A little hook grip action. He pulls the slack out really, really well. Um, it looks like we might be able to get that back a hair flatter. And so sometimes a, a, a misused or a, a quote unquote bad cue. I don't believe there's bad cues, just bad application. But a cue that a lot of people say is get your hips close to the bar um, for a sumo pull. And what people tend to do when they do that is curl their hips underneath them and literally try to get their hips close to a bar. But we only want to get our hips close to the bar if we can remain a neutral or flat flexed back. Um, otherwise, what we do is we get that, you know, curled lower back and it's going to maybe make our speed off the floor a little bit faster because we can flex everything and just crank on it. But it's going to make our lockout nearly impossible near 85, 90, 95%. And that's what it looks like you're doing right now, my man. So uh, what I would try to do is even right here, is you're a little too uh, uh, flexed in that low back. We need to get it into some extension. Um, overall, really, really, really solid. So two things I would try to do is one, I would try to focus on that pelvic control. You hear me, ladies. 
pelvic control. And I'll try to push those hips back a little bit, getting that spine a little bit flatter. Uh, and number two is I'll try to move your eyes and neckline up to the horizon. Um, now, neutral spine, I think, is, is generally the goal, but people maybe overdo it. Yeah, see, we can see this curvature in the spine, even on setup. Uh, and what we want to do is be able to have hips a hair higher, not curled underneath you like so. And it's going to make your lockout and your maximal loads uh, the same speed as your speed off the ground. You're really strong, you're really explosive, and, and you're 90% there. But what we need to do, it's vital for you to pull the biggest weight you're possible of, my friend, is to get that low back out of flexion. Because right there, once you get past your knees, all you're doing is a curled, not good levered, under load back extension. Drop another tripod. You guys are like, why does he have two tripods? I don't know, but they're both underneath my foot. So for some reason, I dropped them. Kick them both. Karate kick. Yeah. Um, because once you get that thing flexed and you're back in the right position, then all we have to do is hip extension and push our hips towards the bar, which is a, a cue people often use. And it'll be so much e easier under max load. So my man, let's focus on kind of a slower eccentric, not uh, too controlled because you don't want to get injured, but that Ed Cone style until you can get that back flat, lower the weight to the ground with that flat back and then get some reps that way. I have multiple videos on what I call the Ed Cone style deadlift something I noticed how he pulled uh, that puts him into a better and better position, building a better habit over time. And I think you're going to have a monster pull PR coming once you do that. Um, we just got to get that low back in a better position. But overall, my man, really, really good pull, really strong, really explosive. Uh, and you're just missing that last 5% to make you uh, unstoppable. Shout out to 8-Man Strong in the background. Good guys. I'm not sponsored, but those guys have always been good people to me. This is the, the pull I've been waiting for. So here we have someone that has no clue what they're fucking doing. They seem like maybe a conventional puller. Um, and it seems like they're trying to do a shoulder, uh, bicep, and deadlift routine at the same time, which I actually, you know, I am a fan of the full body workout. So if you can grow luscious hair like this gentleman, if you can grow a successful, highly entertaining, highly educational YouTube channel like this individual, and still sumo pull like an idiot props to you my hat is off to you for those that don't know i am joking this is my homie the one and only alan thrall untamed strength shout out to to him for everything he does for the industry for the sport and for myself allowing me to film and dick around in his gym all the time and shout out to my girl polka in the background another sumo puller overall really good my man that looked really solid what else we got so you're getting a little bit wobbly. It looks like you don't really know uh, the position of where you want your hips to be. Uh, I actually think that we featured you. Dude, you're getting a double feature. What is this? Saturday Night Drive-In? The double feature? X-Men and X-Men 2? I think that we've already featured you, homie. And my main critique is that when you get locked in, uh, your form is really, really, really good. Um, but the inconsistency in reps is slightly alarming. Um, we want to be able to train every rep, every set, and make them look as identical as possible. So then when we do go for that one rep max, uh, we'll be more in, in the zone. But um, when you get locked in, you're pulling that bar into your body, your shins are vertical, your hips are in the right place, uh, you're pulling really, really well. So uh, there's multiple things you can do. Um, one, for you, my friend, I might ditch the straps uh, and try to work on that grip. Two, I would try to do a full repeat rep. So if you have a set of three, you're going to set up, you're going to pull it, you're going to let the bar down, you're going to take a half step back, you're going to stand up, you're going to take a half step forward, almost like a do -si do and you're going to redo a rep. Rinse and repeat. So you're going to step up to the bar, do your routine, pull the barbell, drop the barbell, take one step backwards, one step back forward, and do your second rep. Uh, and if you have a set of five, you're going to do it that same way. If powerlifting is your goal, if one rep max is your goal, we have to make our setup and we have to make our form and technique repeatable. That's going to be uh, A1 in training. So in training, we're trying to build volume, we're trying to build strength, but we really need that repeatable, efficient technique. More sumo in the garage. Shout out to the washer and dryer. These have been known to radiate strength to many a folk on YouTube over the time. Overall, really, really solid, man. Really solid. We'll see if we got a side angle. Um, what I would say is, again, with the sumo pull, as straight as we can get our arms, one, it's going to get out of the way of our thighs. Two, it's going to make that range of motion um, the most efficient possible. So if you can move that grip in just a hair, you'll probably be better off. Uh, you do have some adjustment with that barbell. It looks like maybe your knees are pushing forward a little bit, and some people can get away with that. I don't think it's a big issue for you, as long as you can really lock those lats in and make sure that the barbell does not move forward 
first thing when you're pulling off the ground and that the barbell does not move forward anywhere when you're near your knees. Any deviation from a straight bar, a straighter path or even a slightly backwards path on the sumo deadlift can be extremely detrimental under max loads. Uh, that barbell starts to sneak away with, uh, from you in conventional, you can definitely miss a lift, put a little extra pressure on your back, but it tends to be that people can kind of muscle through it and lean back and get into it. On the sumo deadlift, because balance is more of a factor, bar path is going to be even more of a factor. And that's why people say the sumo deadlift is more technical than the conventional deadlift with which you can make a million arguments if you want. But the, I think the technicality, uh, there's just a couple fine points and balance is a bigger deal uh, when it comes to the sumo deadlift. I appreciate everybody for all the support. New videos Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Salam Mike. Be sure to subscribe, a thumbs up. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Be sure to follow me, Instagram, Salam Mike, 2Ks, Twitter, Salam Mike, 2Ks. I'm out of here. Have a great day, my friends.